okay, we're live. Or we're on. I hope we're live. <laughs> 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 we alternate back and forth. Okay, okay, welcome. And uh, <laughs> we're trying to decide which one is the chairman. Co chair today. We can, uh, I guess it's my turn. Call to order the uh, meeting of the Augsburg Bridge Port Authority Marketing Committee. It's 404. And uh, we have a pretty full agenda. And I think I will turn it over to Mr. Reese at this point. Okay, I think we can keep it under an hour. We've got two presentations. The first one's the McClellan Group to talk about the Quick Crossing campaign, update on the status of that, as well as a possible extension of that. And we also have a couple representatives from the St. Louis County Chamber of Commerce to talk about some tours and initiatives that we might partner with. So we'd start out with, uh, I guess, Morgan McClellan. I'll just pull our seat. Yeah. I think everybody's met. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Thanks, everyone. So, for those of you who don't know us, uh, we're from the Cloud Group. And uh, we're an integrated marketing and communications company. So, we pretty much do everything um, from strategy design, video web, print, interactive, social media, ebooks. <coughs> Our campaign. So we got together about a year ago, and you came to us with a proposition saying, hey, you know what? We want to bring more trucks across your bridge. So our approach, we wanted to create something that would form the core of your future efforts, and that would end up being your quick crossing website. We wanted to have something that have immediate and potential impact, more than just a simple billboard or magazine advertisement. So what we know, we know that the majority of Canadian truck traffic heading in this area comes from Montreal. French is the language of choice, and drivers stay connected through an online radio station called Truck Stop Quebec. Now, Truck Stop Quebec is an online radio show that has around 100,000 unique visitors a month. And we've been in work with them over the past year and a bit now. So the original proposal, we wanted to target the primary source of Canadian bridge traffic, Canadian truckers and fleet owners. Now this approach we took, we look at it as a sort of a, a 360 degree approach. We're going to come at them from every angle. We want to expose the bridge's brand on social media, through video, through the microsite, web banners, email campaign. As you guys have probably seen uh, the video, uh, we engaged Truck Stop Quebec and uh, two Canadian trucking firms for the video. We produced a video in both English and French. Um, if you haven't seen the video, I can show it to you uh, after the presentation. And that has been up on uh, YouTube now, and it's been very successful. The microsite. Uh, we built a very unique and memorable website. You know, this isn't your sort of typical website. This is different. And we researched and purchased URLs that would support our branding. Frontier Rapide, basically in French, translates to quick crossing. Email campaign. We also hand built a few hundred uh, targets through our partners that we were working with. So it was uh, 730 truck permits, Truck Stop Quebec, uh, I believe a couple of magazines. And uh, we had sent out uh, a series of email blasts targeting and pointing people towards the Quick Crossing website. Now over this campaign, uh, the average open rate um, was around 26.6%, beating the industry average of about 17. So basically what this means is that people were actually opening them. They weren't just seeing it and throwing it into their junk mail. When the Canadian anti-spam legislation came into effect, uh, but I think it was last July, we only had four people opt out. So they had the opportunity to say, I don't want to see these emails anymore, and only four people out of our list said no. Social media. Uh, we've integrated Facebook and Twitter, and we have had steady and gradual growth. We have uh, actively promoted the campaign on Facebook and Twitter, so anything from a news article, from latest updates in the video, to anything else we're doing, everything goes to Facebook and Twitter and pushes everybody to the Quick Crossing website. So this past so six months ago, we engaged Truck Stop Quebec, Benoit Terrien, who was the, the, the host of the, uh, the video that we produced, and we secured a six-month contract with him. 
and we ran multiple video, uh, radio ads. These included sponsorship segments, which are around 15 seconds in length. So we did every, they do a thing uh, twice uh, every, uh, every show. They have a, a border wait time segment and a traffic wait time segment. So anytime there's a border wait time segment, it was brought to you by the Ogdensburg Bridge, off, you know, the quickest and most convenient way to cross the border in eastern Ontario. And that, that ran for the past six months. Also, we, um, over the holiday period, we managed to secure their, one of their only few ad spots. And now over Christmas and into New Year's, they did a, the shows like their best of shows. So when those were running on repeat, we managed to log in there a, a happy holidays message from the Ogdensburg Bridge, you know, quick convenient crossing in Eastern Ontario and upstate New York. Another thing we do as well, now Truck Stop Quebec, as you know, they've got a huge following. And he also has a very successful email campaign. And he has over 9,000 subscribers to his email campaign. So we, out of our contract over the six months, uh, we managed to secure four spots. And on each spot, we were the top listing in that email blast. And the minute you'd open that up, the first click, we were right there front and center. And we did a variety of messages with that, everything from a holiday message to, I believe it was in the spring when you know, it was getting pretty cold and nothing was happening. And said, you know, the weather may be unpredictable, but what is predictable at the Augsburg Bridge is it'll be quick and convenient and we'll have no delays, you know. That's one thing you can predict. Getting the story out there. Um, we also engaged uh, a number of leading uh, publications from Today's Trucking, uh, Transport Routier, which is the French equivalent of that, Canadian Shipper Magazine, Truck News, The Face, and we secured a number of articles. And I've actually got some printouts here for you guys if you want to take a look at them later. So that was all done, you know, without any cost added. And it got a lot of play, and I know they even wrote out to John, you did an interview with one of them as well. So that, that's great. It's great for brand awareness. Another thing we also did in the past few months, we put together, designed these, these four ads. We actually saw two of them when we were coming in. I had to pull over and take a couple of pictures, make sure nobody was coming by me. But um, and this all drives back to the, the key messages of what you guys are about. You have convenient access to Interstate 81. You save time and money on border crossings. I mean, you guys have the cheapest tolls out here. You, know, you offer 10% discount prepaid cards available for trucking companies. And now credit cards accepted, which is a big plus for a lot of businesses coming across the border. <coughs> Paid advertisement. Now this is something else we engaged with. We, um, we've been working with uh, a magazine called uh, Transport uh, Magazine, and they are a, one of the top French trucking, Quebec trucking magazines. And we, so we uh, ran a, a couple of web banner ads over the um, uh, month of March, last month. But the big thing is, we have, uh, you see this down here, this is a mock-up of what's going to be in their April edition. Now, if you guys know of Expo Cam, it's happening this coming week and it's the largest trucking show in Quebec. Now, we have secured a one-third ad in the magazine that's already gone to print and will be handed out to every visitor going to the trucking show. Now, that ad is going to be running in the magazine and it plays to your key messages once again. On the bottom it says, save time and money on border crossings. It says convenient access from 401 to 81. And it also says on the bottom right there, now this is in French, but it says you know 10% discount cards available. So once again, driving home those key messages of what you guys are all about. So as I mentioned earlier, you know we, we positioned the website as the core to everything you do. Kind of think of it as like the headquarters of, of, of your brand. So any ad you make, any post to social media, any story that runs in a magazine, you're always pushing the audience to one place, and that is a quick crossing website. So the results. <coughs> now these results um, have been over the these numbers have been gathered over the past six months since the extension. And our website analytics. Since the campaign's extension six months ago, the Quick Crest Crossing website has had 2,363 views. 88% of all users were first time visitors, meaning these people were the first time to ever view the website. And the average time on the website was a minute and 42 seconds. Now that is a very significant number, because what this means, it means people are going to the website and they're exploring it. They're reading it, they're checking out other pages, they're seeing what's going on, they're not just getting on the website and jumping right off. So it shows us, you know, people are engaged, you know, they want to learn more. So Hughes, Hughes 
visiting the website. Now, when we set up, when we created this campaign, we wanted to target people, industry drivers, and in, in, in Quebec. And so, 51% of all the traffic, one well, half of the traffic that visits the website, originate in Quebec. Ontario accounted for 46%, and Montreal, Ottawa, and Toronto were the top three cities. Now, in the United States, nearly half of all the traffic from the US came from New York State. The three top cities were New York City, Syracuse, and Ogdensburg. So in terms of going out and targeting the right people in Quebec, I mean, Montreal is the top city, so I think you know, that's heading in the right direction. Social media. We have had incremental steady growth on Facebook and Twitter. Um, interesting, though, about the Facebook account, and this is, this is, this is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. 90% of all the cities that are viewing our page are based in Quebec. So 9 out of 10 of the top pages, our top cities are all originating from Quebec. So we're, we're reaching the right people. Extending the campaign. So just to back it up a little bit. So far, you know, we've positioned the bridge as the most quick and convenient border crossing in eastern Ontario. Proof through analytics, we're heading in the right direction in terms of growth and our demographic reach. We're reaching the right people with the right message. We've developed strong partnerships to help grow the brand profile in a cost-effective manner. This is from our non-paid editorials, our relationship with Truck Stop Quebec, um, through, a, through a wide range of, uh, of, of contacts we've, we've acquired. So we like to propose a one-year campaign to build the brand as the best way to cross the border. Now the reason why we propose one year is because it offers a lot of flexibility and it also helps in terms of cutting down costs when it comes to media buys. One of the things we're thinking of is the No Bridge Construction Campaign. Now if you see there on the top right hand corner, that is a screen grab uh, from the front page of the Brockville Recorder. And this was published last month. And Lansdowne Bridge Show Slowdown Begins. Now guys, you probably know this, but the Thousand Islands Bridge is going through a major construction right now, and they are going to have big delays this summer. Now that's unfortunate for them, but it presents an opportunity for you. It can drive home the fact, once again, that you guys are the quickest and convenient way to get across the board. I mean, border wait times are bad enough, and you know it's going to get even worse with the summertime rush. And drivers are going to show up there, and they're going to be able, well, you know what, I need, I need an alternative route. And it was interesting, in the, in the article uh, that ran in the Brockville <coughs> Reporter, they, 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 they talked to um, the, the president of Crisca Transport. And Crisca Transport is a major trucking company based out of Prescott. And he's quoted in there saying, he's like, look, my guys are going to face delays there. We're going to take the Augsburg Bridge. Like, that's what it is. So those in the know know to come here. So what we're proposing is we want to get ahead of the curve here. We want to let other people know that before they get there and they're held up in traffic at the TI Bridge, let them know. We want them to, you know, the Augensburg Bridge, you know, synonymous with no construction. TI Bridge construction, Augensburg, no construction. But we want to do it in a way where we never mention their name. We don't want to just call them out on this. That's not what we're about. Another thing we want to do is we want to sort of evolve a quick crossing website. We want to turn it into a website where people can go and get live, up-to-date information, whether it's border wait times, traffic reports, weather conditions, and more. Now, if you go to any of their websites right now, they, they, they don't do a very good job of that. And there's even third-party websites like easybordercrossing.com that have tried to fill that void, and they don't even do a very good job of it. So we recommend even exploring the installation of a webcam that would broadcast live feeds of the border lines. Now, we don't know what that is, works with Homeland Security and everything. But we also recommend investing in purchasing en route billboard signage to increase the bridge's awareness. Now, this is a little mock-up here. This is just for this presentation. This isn't any sort of what we, what we go with. But if we could raise the bridge's profile in areas that we know our message is getting out to, whether it's south of Ottawa, um, west of Montreal, we just want to raise the bridge's awareness and get the message out there. And finally, growing our partnerships. You know, we want to continue working with our industry-leading partners to grow the bridge's profile and deliver results 
over the next year. Now we've made some great contacts. It's been a lot of fun for me working on this, and we'd like to continue doing it because we believe we're going in the right direction. We're seeing results, and I think we should keep the momentum going and keep moving ahead. So that's it. The on route billboards, <coughs> um, the issue we've always run in is that on 401 and 416, I, I don't think they let you put any billboards in the right of way. Okay. So are you proposing farther back or? Yeah, yeah. that's, uh, and, and the, the verbiage up there was investigate. We do want to look at that. We would, we would start right where the trucks in, basically enter the system coming out of Quebec and start looking at those feeder roads. So if, uh, if it could be an arterial road in Montreal, for example, but you know that a large proportion of the trucks are coming down that road. Right. So we don't have to be on the 401. We just want to do something that you see. It could be, it could be as simple as in, in a farmer's field. It could be uh, I have a distribution uh, center. Yeah. It could yeah. be any number of places. We don't know. Uh, <coughs> this would be it. That's part of the process is to go and look and talk to you about where, what, what the opportunity might be. But we think there's potential there. Okay. When, when do you see the flow of changing or the opportunity of flow of changing? <coughs> For the construction, you know. I mean, do, do you want to train them earlier? <laughs> no. Yeah. Or when the time arises, that, that, that's the time to make the shift. <coughs> Well, I think I think we want to continue. We want to continue what we're doing now. With uh, like, we wouldn't stop the email campaign yeah. or the website sort of thing. But we because we've built that, so now it's more uh, keeping the oil topped up and keeping that part of it running and clicking over. Okay. Uh, and then when signage like that goes up, if that's what is chosen to do, it still, as Morgan said, the message pushes everybody to a common website. So if you if you see that a number of times, maybe the first two or three times you drive out and you see it and it doesn't click right away you, it's you know because there's a lot of clutter out there but then you're listening to uh, uh, Ben Law's radio station or you pick up a trucking magazine and you see the ad and say I saw that and then you go and look and that's how things happen that's a 360 degree messaging that we're trying to build towards well, one of the things that is happening obviously the Canadian dollar the shift is who's going there to buy and who's not coming over here to buy and it, it's shifting. Do you have any any thoughts on how to approach that problem? I mean, the Canadian dollar is... is Down at 20%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so people are... Yeah, it's really through. impacted Canadians. Uh, Cross-border <coughs> shopping for Canadians going to the States has all, always been like a, a Canadian right. You know, we've looked at that as going, wow because the prices are so much lower. It's actually an issue in Canada of why prices are lower in the States for the same thing. So people have always loved to go cross-border shopping, but that 20% drop right now, and, and there's lots of news stories about that, it's really taken a hit. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's, this town is hurting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why the cultural impact of Canada has really affected the border towns. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I would just add, we've seen a significant drop-off in passenger vehicles, which typically we'll see an uptick in the trucks. We have not yet seen that. Mm -hmm. Coming in from Canada? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the whole, uh, that whole issue, uh, they, they're, they're talking about whether uh, 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 the fuel, the cost of fuel is a good thing for the Canadian economy or not, you know, because Calgary, is, uh, as a major oil uh -huh. producer, has uh, taken a real hit. So the government's position is that actually it's going to, uh, because of the price of the fuel dropping, it'll put more money back into the pockets of consumers, and you will see more activity, but it hasn't come through the system yet. And they're saying this summer is when we should start to see it. Who knows? Somebody gets it before it gets to the consumers, trust me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is an awful lot of trucks, I mean, five times as many trucks across the Thousand Island Bridge. Um, do you think that would help capture some of that, or a lot of that? In the concert with other approaches that we're taking, yeah, I think they're gonna they're gonna get there, and they're gonna want another route. And for those who don't know about it, get show them. You know, you gotta let them know you guys are here. For those who don't know, and I mean, and I can just say, just besides all the talking about a drop in auto and crossings. You know, we, we have a lot of neighbors that are cottage from the United States who take the Thousand Island Bridge, and I can 
guarantee you that they're not going to be taking that. I mean, they're going to be saying, like, hey, we're going to be taking Augensburg instead. It's, and it's just all that happens, you know, spread word of mouth as well. And we know the truckers, too. They're always saying on the radio, they're telling other guys, they're changing their routes on the fly. So I think, I think it could make it. You know, and it, take, it takes time to change people's opinions over the years. There's, there's no question, and, you, and you've got to kind of stay at it and keep stirring the pot. And Morgan mentioned in there that we weren't going to mention the other bridge by name. And we say that because you've said that you, to us. You've told us that you don't want to be kind Emissarial. of... Emissarial. We don't be emissarial. Yeah. yeah. No. So well, we hope to have construction someday, too. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, uh, but I don't think we have to say anything negative about them. It's just, it's just a reality. It's going to be very tough there this summer, starting this summer. Well, I think they would probably like. To, I mean, I know the revenue is one thing, but the, the frustration of people sitting there waiting. And, and, and I mean, I know I've been there a couple of times last summer, and it's like that's a long way. I don't it know. It sure is. Yeah. yeah. We came across uh, last year. We were going over to the boat show in Clayton, and uh, we we were going to draw it. And we got to the extension, you know, the, the bridge extension goes yeah. up to to uh, Highway 2. Traffic was backed up all, all the way. way up there, stopped on the highway trying to make the turn down. And they were so backing off. We gave up. Road. We went. We gave up, went back to town, got in our boat, and took the boat across the river, and it was the only way we made it. So it's off the mountain. Yeah. Since their efforts started last April, I guess, uh, as an average, uh, truck traffic's been up 4.89%. 3,561 vehicles, including some really peak numbers of 10.73, 16.13, 11.39 when they started the campaign. So that's a good indication. And I think with uh, <coughs> I think with the value of the Canadian dollar going down, exports from Canada should increase. So the timing would seem appropriate in addition to the construction activity that's going on as well. One of the unique things when you think about you hire somebody to and what you've done, you've shown results. Okay? And it's like one one concept is continue that momentum or if and then then if you don't do that, what happens if we completely stop? And what happens? Does it go down, does it go up, whatever it wanna be? I mean we're not really to play with somebody's dollars. I mean to me it was I'm thinking here right off the top of some what if we just stopped our campaign and did absolutely nothing? Well, I'm not sure I want to risk that thought because if I don't do anything, I probably will not get anything. So I, I think momentum is a key part. Mm -hmm. How we go about it and where we go with it, I think uh, is, is important about how we do it. I think you're doing a marvelous job. There's no question about it. Nice. You know, so the question is at what cost that we can afford to get the results we pay for. If we put $20,000 in and get Thirty thousand dollars back. I guess that's a. I, I guess that's a, a win. Because any time you get put your money in, you get money back more than you put in. That is a win. But I mean, that's what we got to be smart about. Absolutely. Yeah. And you. I think you need to be looking at the investment that you're making now too. That investment that you've made now has paid back in some in some good returns so far. But they're not. That money's been spent, and the returns will keep generating. If you keep plugging away, yeah. it's like you know, you've already bought the car. Now you're going to top up the gas and the oil, and uh, you know keep it keep it uh, clean, and uh, and uh, you're, you you are investing more, but you're extending the campaign further, different ways. So by all accounts, it should grow. Well, we're looking for happy customers at a reasonable cost, saving money, time, whatever. That's happy customers. How do, how do we prove that? They have to come here to do it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I can just leave some of the articles here if you guys want to take that. How many hits did you have on YouTube? Do you remember the number? I haven't checked in a while. We'll send that to you uh, later today. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can go on and just check it. I mean. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. See you later. And then we have Brooke Rouse, the St. Lawrence County Chamber of Commerce. She's the executive director, and she agreed to come and 
just talk about some nice uh, initiatives that she's working on. And Adam Paul is with the St. Lawrence Film Festival, Festival, and they're headed up to Ottawa, so it was convenient for him to, to be here as well for a major event that's going to be cross-border in the fall. So, Welcome to both. Thank you. Welcome. Can we join you at the Yes, table please do. You can have that seat. I didn't know about this part. I didn't think. Well, thank you, John, for inviting me and extending the invite to Adam. I'm um, the new director of the county chamber, and I'm trying to new. I still say new until June 2nd of this year. Um, but I've been trying to get out to different communities, chambers, to kind of spread awareness about our role in tourism. So we're going to be talking about tourism rather than trucking in our presentations. But um, just wanted to kind of explain the relationship that the chamber has with Isle of New York so that you can be thinking about ways that we might be able to work together to leverage not just those funds, but those relationships. And um, there are a lot of opportunities with I Love New York. Um, so the county chamber has been designated as the tourism promotion agent for the county for 50 years. And um, what that means is that the county allocates funds to us. The, a portion of those funds are then matched by New York State. They go into a specific account that can only be used for I Love New York. <laughs> and um, there's a handbook for how we can use those funds, very specific uh, guidelines for advertising and marketing under I Love New York. So that's, that's how that works. Um, we look at different opportunities, advertising, um, trade shows, all kinds of different things to, to promote the area and leverage the funds of Isle of New York. So that's kind of specific money that we get, money that goes out in certain ways. And then we're also connected with the Thousand Islands region as well as the Adirondack Regional Tourism uh, Agents. And they're also connected with Isle of New York, and so we work with them with various opportunities beyond the local kind of funding that might include um, hosting travel agents through the area, attending major media shows in New York, or the event we're headed to tonight is an I Love New York event. Um, they're just certain press releases. Um, we had a call earlier this year about a TV show that was going to be in Governor. They called us. So those are all things that kind of trickle down typically through I Love New York. Um, so that's that's a very brief, in a nutshell, I Love New York connection. And then um, we're working with the OVPA on the regional tourism grant right now. The county's in charge of the fishing portion for the entire North Country region from Lake George to Lake Ontario. It's quite a large area. As you guys knows. recognize that? That's the Market New York program. Yes. Um, and we're working with the partners closely uh, on the different portions to make sure that <coughs> St. Lawrence County is represented when they're promoting motorcycling or uh, boat cruising and vice versa. So it's, it's been a, a neat process to make sure that we're really working together. Um, so that's, that's that in a nutshell, but I just like people to know how the, the Isle of New York funds work. The guidelines that I like people to be aware of we cannot use the funds for specific events, the Isle of New York funds, to promote specific events. Uh, we cannot use them for specific communities or attractions. Um, and we have to, it has to be marketing that goes out of the county and brings visitors from out of the county in. So those are the three basic guidelines that, that cover a lot of what we can and cannot do with those funds. So we've been <coughs> meeting and brainstorming about ways that we can cooperate and partner um, advertising in the Ottawa region because that's an obvious target mm -hmm. um, that encourages traffic across the bridge. So one of those is Ottawa. Ottawa at home is one of the ones I, <coughs> my feeling is that an ad is an ad, um, but I'm really trying to get media in the greater area to know what we're about, especially our Canadian neighbors, because I think that's, they're right there. They should be coming. 
across the border. Um, so I'm trying to, to build relationships with the media, which is a big part of tonight as well, so that they incorporate us into their stories, not just calling <coughs> for ads. And when they do call for ads, I ask for editorial. So this project here is looking at a page in Ottawa at Home, which is a, a home magazine. I brought the stats on their distribution. Um, and it would be a page of uh, basically kind of day trips, weekend trips, just over the border. So it would be encouraging traffic from Ottawa across the Ogdensburg Bridge, um, and then giving them kind of mini itineraries of what they could be doing with shopping not being as attractive now we'd be focusing more on activity based things um, the wine trail is launching this summer which is a huge attraction unfortunately they can't bring wine back so hopefully they'll come and enjoy and spend a night or two as well um, but we can really leverage that uh, we have the Remington we have a lot of outdoor activity so we would be looking to kind of leverage those attractions and encourage you know, families to come across. They publish five times a year and they <coughs> distribute about 30,000 copies each time and they target um, the regions of Ottawa that have the most wealth basically, basically mm -hmm. so it's a good target audience. And yeah, and she's looking at it's around 1,700 hours that would be split two ways. So you know, 880 hours a piece, so it's, you know, but something that we're, we're looking at much more. Is it out of your money, or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I mean, uh, as I listen to your conversation, the, the first thing that came up to mind is, is the bridge. You know, we just talked about the bridge and what it means to everybody. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the way, it's taken granted that it's a, a wonderful structure what it is. And what our responsibility here is to maintain the, the integrity of that bridge is very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. And to politically solidify that that bridge needs to, I would say, maintain that integrity so it can be used for a long, long time. I mean, we're looking at 50 years ahead right now as we speak to maintain the, the bridge that it is and the repairs that need to be done. And without that bridge, your window of opportunity just gets lost. Mm -hmm. The people come across, come out here, the economy, the town, and everything. We've been through this numerous times, and how serious it is, and we're in trouble. The level of being in trouble that it's deteriorating in a way that's faster than we realized it was going to happen, and we need to get on track to do for our federal people and everybody involved that we need to make sure this bridge is taken care of. Mm -hmm. And now it's not going to fall down tomorrow, and it's safe, and it's all those type of things. <coughs> but somewhere along the line, is is that your deterioration is faster than quicker you can repair it, then you're in trouble. That's exactly, that snowball's rolling down the hill, whatever. I'd like to know what that bridge means to you. Well, I personally travel to Ottawa quite a bit. Um, I have a bed and breakfast in Canton as well, and we have guests who we encourage to fly in and out of Ottawa as well. But I always, just as they were saying here, it's the quickest. I don't... I don't compare prices because I, I don't really No, I was thinking, what, I know personally, I know, yeah. I'm just saying, take it to another level. What, is, what does that bridge mean to tourism? Okay, I see what yeah. you're saying. Well, I think that access is, is a key piece to tourism. Um, and so that ability to, you know, majority of the population of Ottawa, or excuse me, of Canada, is right here on their southern border. So the ability to access St. Lawrence County allows us to then have that market at our mm -hmm. hands, whereas otherwise we have we have some other access points, but this is a main point of access for a huge population. So we recognize that in focusing our tourism dollars and initiatives that that they're coming across this and the Messina Bridge, mm -hmm. and they're they're visiting here. So it's it's an access piece here. Um, I think that's that's the biggest thing is looking at those source markets and access here. I think one one of the things just to add on to that is uh, we're gearing up for both the uh, Tiger program, the EB5 program, and one other program for future funding for the structure. One of the things we'll be doing is we'll be reaching out to the chamber, looking for letters of support as we have in the past for those projects. Yeah. 
because it is critical. Without the bridge, we don't have the tourism because unless you've got a boat, you're not coming across in a timely manner. Yeah. Yeah. So. One major event that's coming up, just so you're aware of it, and Adam can speak to it, is the, this uh, St. Lawrence International Film Festival, which couldn't take place without the bridge because it connects Ottawa and Canton and Ogdensburg. And, uh, that's exactly right. Sam and I had a chance to talk briefly before I came in. Do you mind if I just yes, take over now? Uh, that was great. Um, but Sam and I had a chance to talk before uh, we came in about the story of the bridge, which is, uh, you know, in developing a film festival, it, it, it's nothing without its story. And part of the reason we decided to start a festival in this area uh, has to do with the story of the river, which has to do with this border that is more a uniter than a divider and more a... Um, a common entity than something that our two countries have um, had to see as an obstacle. The bridge is obviously the the best way for our two countries to work together, play together, and be together. This uh, festival was conceived as something that would have events on both sides of the U.S.-Canada border. There is no film festival like it in the world. Cannes, uh, either? Say again? Cannes or Cannes? Or That's in France. That's I know, but I mean, is it off the same principle? It is a film festival of that type. That's exactly oh, right. Wow. With films in competition, with uh, uh, parties, with an opening gala. But there is no film festival in the world that has events on both sides of a shared border, international okay. border. Excellent. The reason for that... Is, is obvious, it's a pain in the neck. It's very difficult, but if it can be done anywhere, it can be done here. And part of the reason I say that, and that's my pat line, is because of that bridge. Part of the reason that we can do it is because it is a fairly fluid border, and as you, I've been hearing all day, it's the quickest and the cheapest and the easiest way across. Um, our opening gala will be on Thursday, the 22nd of October in Ottawa. Our competition films will begin on the 23rd of October in Canton. We're aligned with the schools, associated colleges. We'll have events at each of those colleges, screenings on Main Street in Canton, a block party on Main Street in Canton, and then a special event in Brockville at the Brockville Arts Center, which if you haven't been to it, it's a beautiful $2 million renovated, spectacular building that we'll have a very special event at. Obviously, we're a film festival. Part of what we do is celebrate films and the people who make them, and it is our goal, and what we're working on now is making sure we're bringing notable filmmakers here, people that do have some name recognition, will attract the press, it's the whole reason to do our opening gala for this event in Ottawa is there's more press there, there's an airport there that's bigger, and there are hotels there that can be attractive to that level of our clientele. Uh, through the three days, um, in addition to engaging the student crowd, we expect you know, I think it's fairly conservative, a thousand people over three days to attend the festival in one of the locations, that, at least one of the locations that were uh, holding events. Um, and the bridge is a very important part of that. We hope, that John and I have talked, we hope that we can partner with you guys in one way or another to offer either ticketing and bridge pass uh, packages, uh, if there's the possibility of any kind of expedited crossing for our uh, guests. We're going to have shuttles uh, getting people back and forth from uh, Canada to the U.S. and vice versa. NYSARC is going to be providing uh, buses for us. Um, and uh, so, so obviously we can group together people as much as possible, but, but uh, cooperating with you guys in, the, in uh, every way is very important to us, obviously. Um, and then, you know, we, I am not unaware of the needs, the financial need here and the ideas of... Uh, Pushing more traffic across the bridge and generating revenue for you is certainly part of what we're about. It's part of what we're about for the whole region. You know, we're not unaware of the economic. Let me, let me help you with something. The revenue sure. is not really our mission. Our mission is to create jobs and excitement and type of things for sure. Canton, Messina, wherever it may be in this area. Well, that's what yeah, the festival is about too. About. We're aligned. Then. Are, are we allowed to use our LED sign for them? Well, what's your organization type? We're a for-profit uh, for corporation. We will, however, uh, uh, we, uh, we'll, we're not fully hybridized, but we will have a, um, an individual donor fund that will run through the St. Lawrence County uh, uh, Arts Council. Perfect. Uh, so we could we could do business on that level if you can't then do what we need to do. I'm thinking of the word free. 
uh, mm. word free for the specs for the sign. You need to go to Brooks, so that way Brooks can transfer them to you. Great. And that way you'll know what we need to have out there on the sign. Great. So we can be promoting this today because this That's is huge. for the public benefit. So. That's huge. And things will start to ramp up for us come August, September, obviously, <coughs> when we start to announce our guests and our screenings, our films, and that sort of thing. But it's all meant to be fairly high profile. It's all meant to draw attention to both sides of the border from each side of the border and to stimulate the cross-border trade, to stimulate that job growth, and to be part of the economic development of the region, which we think is uh, an incredible opportunity. And uh, yeah, I'll stop talking. Go ahead and ask. Well, I, I think it's outstanding. I mean, who a creative idea to reproduce something happening in France, wherever it is, and you say, okay, what are we doing here? I, I think it's very creative. I, I don't know about the time of year, but... Well, you know, well, there's a reason. There was a reason for it at the end of October, and that has to do with family weekends at the universities, making sure there's housing, oh, okay. and then, of course, there are there are other festivals in the region. Um, okay. we're, we're not it, and that includes Ottawa, that includes Toronto. We're going to have an event in Toronto that is sort of a coming out party for the festival. That's also a great way to direct. A, the Toronto International Film Festival is a massive. It's one of the largest festivals in the world. There's an enormous press presence there, and we'll certainly capitalize on that, again, with an honorary chair who's hosting the party and drawing some attention, but all of it meant to draw eyes this way, just like the opening gala is meant to draw eyes over to Canton, just like everything that happens in Canton is meant to draw eyes to Brockville. So it's, it's, a, uh, it's a little bit of a spider web, but it uh, is something that we're, we're really excited about. And this first year, it's meant to be an annual event, and this first year is meant to be an appetizer for what the larger event can be, so that five years down the road, we have a two-week-long festival. We have people up here earlier in the fall spending a lot of time, a lot of money, crossing borders and staying in rooms and drawing a lot of attention to what we're doing. So that's our mini yeah. growth plan for you. Yeah, but, I'm I'm yeah. And so I'm, I was just very excited that Brooke asked me to join, and I appreciate you making the room. It's great to meet you all. Obviously, there's more conversation to be had, which I'm wide open to, and I'll give you my cards as well. Uh, but um, very good. Yeah. We're here. And our interest in it. supporting, I've really been acting just to help Adam get connected with different people. Um, but, you know, our interest is really, you know, talking about tourism and access again, is to open up this border. I think people travel up to, to Ottawa pretty frequently, but, but they don't always look at us as a, you know, an overnight place or a, a day trip. So I think that this event is really going to open up the idea that it's just down the road and it's not know another country all the way over there or whatever so it and all of our marketing will point toward that to the ease of access to we're talking about shooting a commercial in May for the festival that will live mostly online but that that shows exactly that is a speeded up version of going from Canton to Ottawa across the bridge and back and that it's not it's not at all a, a difficulty it's important for us and especially in year one and it is part of that story that we were talking about that this <coughs> This region is more than northern New York and southern Ontario. It's more than Ottawa and Canton. It really is a fourth coast. It really is a 60-mile radius region that can be, that is, first of all, already full of so much to do and see and be a part of. Um, and again, it doesn't happen without the bridge. It's, it's yeah. completely connected by the, by the bridge. I, I appreciate you coming here to think of us and be a part of your, of your story. I really Absolutely. do. It's huge, huge, huh? Thanks for the time. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Off to Ottawa. All right. Have a good trip. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but, and one other thing, just uh, to drop a name. I just came from the U.S. Embassy on the other side, and they're very keen to be involved in the opening gala. So it's very likely that that first event will have that added diplomatic element um, from the community up there. Being an international film festival, seeking international films, that's important to us to be a part of uh, the diplomatic community up there. And if we're able to involve the ambassador and, and, and the embassy in any way. So there's a huge staff up there, too. I mean, yeah. If you draw them down for it, yeah. That's yeah, a, that's exactly. That's a target in itself, yeah. It's an enormous community. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for the time. So anybody guys. can attend this? Say again? Anybody can attend this? Of course. Okay. So yeah, we'll sell doing? tickets okay. and badges. I mean, you know, we yeah, generate our own revenue that way. Yeah, thank you very much. Good to meet you. Thanks for the time. Thank yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks thanks care. Care. Feel free to get in touch at any time. Brooke, thank you. Thanks, Brooke. No, I'm Good to you. <laughs> so the first uh, item, I guess, is the... Actually, could we back up for one moment, sure. please? Uh, one other thing to note. Um, I'm stepping down as the authority's representative on the uh, Chamber of Commerce due to upcoming projects. 
and uh, Karen Clary is stepping up as the board of director, uh, uh, one of 36, I think. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, Jeff. Yep. So I, uh, I guess the first thing we'll be to talk about the other extension is uh, a thirty thousand dollar proposal. I mean, the last one was six months. It was fifteen thousand. I guess that makes sense. And we saw what they're proposing. So, what was their cost? Thirty thousand. Thirty. Yeah. So. I was, was going to ask you this earlier, but this is all uh, hanging on. <clears throat> if we attribute that all our increase is due to their campaign, mind you, I think uh, they have brought to us a product that um, I, I think has been extremely valuable. But how many vehicles did you say that increase would it, uh, would be would have been? Did you say 356 or was it? There was 3,561 additional trucks there over that 12 month period. 3,560. That is uh, more common. So, how much per vehicle? I use six dollars uh, per vehicle. I think it's a little higher than that, eh, Fred? Yeah, I, I use six forty in budgeting. And I think it's a little over six forty. So, in that, in that 2050 so range, $23,400 round numbers. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I know we've talked before, just when well, we talked about this group, about doing something with the, vi the, with the, with the cars. Yeah. We've, we've talked about that generally and what we're concerned about is that there's been such a dramatic decrease because of the value of the dollar that I don't know that you can overcome that. And you would have to, if you invested twenty thousand dollars, you'd have to get a huge number of vehicles. And I just, I don't know that. I think we need to do something on the tourism side too, but I'm not sure that that's where to put the money. I don't know way if you agree or. Well, I mean, from a functional side, one one truck is worth three cars, and with the dollar the way it is, typically we will see, or I shouldn't say typically, historically we'll see an uptick in the commercial vehicles. Something is different this time. Either we're not <clears throat> far enough down that road to see that uptick, we haven't seen that yet, that we've traditionally seen. So anything that, uh, you know, for 30,000 Canadian, I think this is a real good deal for a one-year extension to see what we can do to increase the trucks. That's Canadian. That's dollars. Canadian, yes. So basically we can subtract one-fifth of that. So it's 20% cheaper than the last time we had an agreement. With yeah. Now, I guess the thing I would point out, by the way, I started dollar counting, as you know I do all the time, but when you have an increase, you bring it to a certain amount. That increase is counted forever until it goes down. That's the other it's part. It's not yeah. like yeah. it's a one year mm -hmm. twenty three thousand. Your investment stops, but what you're making doesn't stop unless it tails off. As you long as that behavior continues of using right. dogs, that's, that's the yeah. important okay. thing. Right there. So just so that uh, you know, at least that I understand that asking the questions, I yeah. I uh, just was kind of interested in the figures. Um, I just like the product myself. I, I do too. I, I, I think you know I, it's, it's very impressive. You mentioned the billboards, possibility of billboards. That wouldn't be included in this thirty thousand dollar proposal, would it? It's a little bit vague, and I can tweak that so that it's not vague. And before Wade signs the agreement, because it it, it mentions them, but it talks about exploring them. We could put a we could put a you know, a well, one or a two number in there, or three number, or whatever, so that we're sure that the funds are used for that if you want to. Yeah, well, I was just curious. I mean, if they're going to come back and say, you know, we did this this study, and you're going to need 30 billboards or whatever. I mean, is that going to be is that included in this cost, or uh, do we have to buy them? Do we have to put them up? You know, is there anything? I, I'm not kind of in the. I, I don't know much about marketing stuff, but. Wouldn't it be intriguing that when someone uh, embarked on their journey that they're thinking about where they're going rather than somewhere along the way changing the route and saying, I think I'll use Augensburg today. You know, in other words, they're driving down 401 and they see our sign, are they going to make a decision then? Or if they were up here in Montreal thinking about it 
before they got all the way down here. Uh, I, I kind of I thought that was kind of a neat little concept that yep. uh, I think might work. <coughs> you know, make you know make a favorable impression the first couple times they cross, and likewise, if they don't have that same favorable impression when they cross someplace else, <coughs> then hopefully that would be, start to become a habit for them. Billboards are expensive, like putting up a whole billboard, no, it wouldn't be included in that, but mm -hmm. but actually slapping a billboard on an existing one, that I think they could do one or maybe two in that cost. There's a good chance, too, from what was shown on there, that their thought is put it on an electronic billboard and cycle the ad. Mm -hmm. Because what they were showing in the mock-up was that yeah. type yeah. of situation. Okay. Well, wait, uh, take us back when, because I know we talked to the board, and I forgot what it cost, 100000 or whatever it is, on, on the signage over there, and how it's poorly labeled how to get to our bridge. Or, or there was something you were, they thought they were going to change it? Uh, yeah, they are going to spend, uh, it was about, Testing my memory here on this one, but um, I think it was in the neighborhood of two hundred thousand dollars Canadian right. mm -hmm. at the time to upgrade the signs. Uh, that has not been done by NT. No, I mean we talked about it. Even we did it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Everybody said, "Well, we invest that." Right. You know, well, that doesn't make much sense to get. You never get your money. Well, you would, but like you said, over what period of time you might change a few people's folks' minds. But what would you get it back in the long term? But I thought maybe the department. Of Minister of the Transportation, I think they called over there, had some idea that they thought they might do something? Yes, they did, and they have not followed through on it. Okay. So their, their head any? person uh, retired their replacement we met with and has since gone. There's an engineer there who was opposed to it originally. He was still in there so in that position. The message is if we advertise to go across the border, we're sending business and a way out of our country. we stop thinking about that. If we, if we say it's that easy to get across, that's what they're doing. Like I'm thinking here, okay, so what is the Canadian dollar doing? It's stopping Canadians from coming over here. But are Americans now going that way? That bridge traffic probably doesn't show it. But my guess is, is there is some, you know. Some sort. larger facilities um, actively, you mentioned passenger campaign. Some of them actively use, like Detroit Windsor is a good example I can think of. They have a, uh, they maintain a market basket of goods that consumers who drive passenger vehicles would normally purchase. And they look at it in Canada, they look at it in the U.S., they update it, I think, every three days. And that's out there for folks to look at. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's designed to spur that passenger traffic market mm -hmm. for that reason. But you're absolutely right. Uh, commerce works both ways, and you're, at the same time you're directing people north, you're hurting the, <coughs> the people on this side and, and vice versa. But, uh, okay. Steve, I've got a couple things. One, I think most of our increase came at the expense of the Seaway Bridge, it looks like, because theirs is down about what ours is up. So as truck traffic increases with the economy, if that does happen like it has happened in the past, that should help us to get more. And if they are having construction down there, and apparently they are, uh, that's really where the potential is, is the Thousand Islands Bridge, if you ask me, because they have five times the traffic we do. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we, we've got the business from Seaway, it appears, at about the same rate as ours. So I think there's a lot of potential there. And I'm not certain of what you said, Wade, about the $30,000 Canadian. Is it Canadian? Because I think we've paid them in U.S. funds in the past. The resolution says Canadian. Does it really? Okay. Well, I, I told Tisha to put that in there. I, I have not discussed that with Doug. But oh, that, okay. I just assumed we were paying in Canadian funds all this time. But you need to discuss oh, that with Doug. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah. difference. Because we have paid in U.S. funds in the past. Oh. The, the, the other deal was U.S. funds. But you can clarify that before we go into the contract. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 Okay. But that was when it was about even anyway, though, right? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty close. Not, not to say yeah. that we shouldn't discuss it, but it right. was about even mm -hmm. or yeah. similar. Yeah, very certainly similar. not yeah. 20%. Right. No, no, no. So we paid them 30000 already? Did we? No. Yes, we had yes. a thirty five. No, actually. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about all together? All together. All, yeah. all together. Oh, okay, because the first one was different. Yeah. yeah, the first yeah. one was the initial developing right. of the okay. website right. okay. and, and that whole campaign. Then we did a $15,000 okay. extension right. for six months. Yeah. Well, let's make a motion that we send it to the full board. 
I second that. Uh, a question I have is, in, in the status that we're in, and I don't question that it's a good idea, and this marketing committee is, I guess maybe it's the time to say what it is, is, is the revenue sources that we have in a way that we can afford to do this. I don't know if I said that the right way. What I'm saying to you is, okay, we are reaching out and we are kind of keep investing going forward. Is this one of these costs? I mean, I, I want to do this. I don't take this away from what you guys just said. But somewhere along the way, Fred, you got to say yeah. to us, you know what? We got a lot going on here, and thirty thousand dollars is a lot of change. If the thirty thousand dollars was being used to buy a chair, and we weren't going to get a nickel back, that's okay. one thing. All right. But the thirty thousand dollars is supposedly going to bring us thirty-five, and if that's the case, then it makes a lot of sense. I mean, or, or more I would be doing thirty thousand every day, all day long, to get five thousand dollars back. Yeah. Nobody's yes. getting. Uh, yeah. So I think, I think it's fine money. like that. But if we, I think we've got to be very careful spending things on things that are, you know, that are. Um, okay. Not going to return itself. So there's you're never any guarantees, but no, this is one of the surest bets that we have. Yeah. But we, this has worked for us in the past. Yes, yes. So sometimes yes. you try to go with known yeah. factors. John, what do you think about doing it? What do you, you both, John? You, you support the concept? Yeah. We have money in our marketing budget for this. Don't we don't. Uh, yes. our budget to. Mm -hmm. is still yeah. quite there's money in our marketing budget. Budget one thing, cash is another. But yes. 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 But it is in the budget that you've approved. Right. That's what you expect. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you, I, I look at it as they were talking and what was going through my mind is, I mean, you, you got to think about these things. Right. Something at the same time. I said, so, okay, guys, do you think people aren't going to figure this out on their own? You think when they go down there and wait once, the next time they're not going to be saying to themselves, is there another okay. option automatically? Is just the construction enough of an advertisement? Yeah. And all of those things were, you know, kind of going around in the back of my mind. Well, I, I would like to think, I mean, to me, is obviously the, the problem they have under the uh, Thousand Island Bridge, and for those people to come our way, is really not to steal their business, it's actually to be informational to people that this is a better right. source for you to travel in a, I guess that'll, a more comfortable, relaxed, speedier way to do it. And I think they, they, they picked up on that, and I think that's a key component that I wasn't even thinking of, you know, whatever, so. Okay. Well, you made a motion in a second? Yeah. Okay. So, um, any other discussion? All in favor? Oh, I mean. No, I have no discussion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye